So you may remember a few lessons ago, I highlighted kind of this competition between uh, subjectivity and objectivity. And I wanna come back to that because this is an important part of what we're doing in this class. And I wanna kind of illustrate by highlighting Deborah Stone's work. Uh, and Deborah Stone wrote this book called Policy Paradox. And she highlighted how through most of the 20th century, policy science really tried to stick to this idea that everything should be very objective and very rational and highlighted how policy scientists tend to kind of isolate themselves from the political um, and should stay very far away from anything even remotely resembling subjectivity. Uh, and she points out that this is kind of folly. Uh, this is uh, an unwise thing to do um, because ultimately the reports that we produce and the science that we do is going to feed into the political decision-making process where it is going to be subjected to uh, the thoughts and the feelings uh, of policymakers and their constituents. Um, and so what she recommends is really doing our analysis with with those thoughts and feelings in mind. For us, that doesn't mean that we just inject our own preferences and feelings into our analysis, but what it does mean is we start off by recognizing um, that the work that we're doing is going to involve subjective elements and making sure that we address those accordingly. So what does that mean for this course? For this course, uh, we're going to be breaking our, our units up into four parts. Part one is problems. Part one means we're identifying something that's wrong with the world. Um, we're going to look at um, what that means uh, and uh, really, really pick apart the problems that we're trying to, uh, to solve. Part two, we're dealing with solutions, right? What are the policy options available to us to solve those problems? Um, and we'll look at programs themselves as one of those policy options. In part three, we'll look at evaluation. So we'll look at uh, how it is that we set up analysis in both methodologies to really evaluate solutions or the programs that have been implemented. Um, and then part four, we deal with recommendations. Um, so what happens when we make our analysis? What, what happens when we have our findings? Um, and then what happens in, in, you know, after we complete our analysis?